Hello everybody and welcome back to Automation. My name is Marcus. Today we're continuing the Let's Play of Contera Motor Cars and a couple things to do today, but today should actually be a quicker episode in terms of pacing. Uh, we only have one new model to uh, introduce and that's the third generation Aspiration. I'm going to replace this body style here. And then I do want to do a little bit of a factory reshuffle between the Dragonfly, the third generation Dragonfly and the Aspiration. Uh, we might want to uh, upgrade this to a large factory, that one to a medium factory, and then produce the Dragonfly in the medium three factory, something like that. Um, and then of course we're going to be doing a facelift of the Bravado as well. But before I do that, uh, I want to make a, a couple of quick adjustments to the prices here, just based on the stock numbers that we're seeing uh, and the, the directions that uh, sales are going. So give me just one moment. Okay, very good. I just let the game tick over once to let those prices take effect, and we've moved the prices down by five grand each on the Bravado because we're not selling all that many of these, but that's helped our orders a little bit. Um, and then on the Dragonfly and the Aspiration, we've ticked the prices up slightly to try and take a little bit of a bite out of these uh, pre-orders. Not that we're short for cash, but with that, I think we're ready to jump in and start designing our new generation Aspiration. Of course, I'm going to target the premium segment for this one to start off. And uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to do another muscle car variant for this one yet. Let's have a look at what bodies are available. Oh, this is a new one here. I don't think this was... Uh, in the game the last time I looked, this sort of, uh, I don't know, is it a, a Saab body? I'm not entirely sure what that's based on. Uh, but that's a potential candidate. It's got uh, a couple different sedans, a wagon, hatchback, no coupe though. That's not the worst thing in the world. What else do we got? Um, let's see. Well, the alternative would be uh, this body here, which is uh, basically just the extended wheelbase version of the one we used uh, for the third generation Dragonfly, but it's already three years old, and uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of feeling this new body style here. It's, uh, uh, I don't know, I think it's kind of attractive. I want to try something new and see what we can make work with that. Um, this one is going to still be steel body panels, monocoque chassis with corrosion resistant steel, of course, front longitudinal, and we're actually going to go double wishbone, double wishbone on this one. I think we have enough familiarity and it's about time that we move this car onto the double wishbone, uh, rear suspension as well, especially seeing as I think with the next, uh, model cycle for the Bravado and the Dragonfly, when we facelift them next episode, uh, or rather re-engineer the next episode, those are probably going to go over to a multi-length. So that will work out well timing-wise. And then after that, we've gained some familiarity in it. We can engineer it onto this car, the fourth generation aspiration, I believe. We're still going to put in a couple of points of quality. And then uh, we'll uh, replace the variant. We're going to be using the Excelsior motor still. And then we'll start with the B75. I think the main change that we're going to be making here is just the switch over to multi-point EFI. Um, yep, there it is. Sticking with a single intake. Anything else we want to do here? Maybe just slightly higher revs. That's going to be a nice all-around upgrade, but not quite as big as the change from, say, carburetors to EFI. And I'm going to take some quality out of it. We're going to leave it just at plus one so our engineering time on it isn't too high. Uh, okay, that looks about right. 212 horsepower. I guess that's just what we're going to get out of it. Our exhaust still looking good? Yeah. Okay, looking good there. I think that's the engine. Now for the trim, let's start off with the sedan body. What I'm going to do is, uh, let's see what kind of morphs we've got here. I'm going to widen it. Ooh, I really like the, uh, the fender flares on this. Wow, wow, they widen out very nicely. We can make the trunk kind of like a boat tail type of thing and then make it a little bit longer. Bring that forward a little bit. I like the sort of square shape. That can go down or it can go, let's make it sort of upright. I think that'll suit the personality of the car a little bit better. We can adjust the B pillar there a tiny bit. Maybe actually bring that one, uh, the C pillar forward slightly. And then can I give it just a little bit more of a notchback shape? Yeah, I think that looks really good. I like this car, it uh, or this body so far. It has kind of short overhangs, which is a rarity for automation bodies, I feel like. I feel like a lot of them are guilty of just like sticking like three feet out over either end. Um, 
Anyways, we'll move right along. Of course, we're going to do the design afterwards. This model is going to be rear wheel drive, but I'm excited to note that we've unlocked all wheel drive because I do think I'm probably going to facelift it on to the uh, at least the supercar variant of the Dragonfly. Uh, that one feels like it needs it, and it actually could use it to make use of the added power of the uh, and of the uh, V12 engine. But uh, sticking to the uh, aspiration for now, it's going to be a four-speed automatic. And I think I'd like to try doing a viscous limited slip diff. That works well to reduce wheel spin without making the car, uh, without sacrificing too much drivability. I think the geared LSD uh, tends to make it a little bit more oversteery, but we'll see. I'll check the steering graph on that afterwards. I could be making that up. We'll just do a standard gearing adjustment here for now, up to top speed. Radial tires, of course, a medium compound for this. I think 225s are probably a good place to start. Alloy wheels and 16-inch uh, rims. Well, let's make the tires a little bit larger. Should we do 17-inch rims? I think that actually looks okay. And then we can space out these wheels a little bit. You know, actually looking at it, 225s might be a little bit much. Let's try 215s. I think we're only running like 205s or something on our, uh, on our current model. Okay, very the nice, satisfying 70 front spacing, 70 rear spacing here. Ground clearance is low, but we can obviously come back to that later. I'm going to go vented disc in the front uh, with two pistons and solid disc in the rear with one piston. Let's try it. Semi-clad under tray, a little bit of extra cooling airflow, I think is what we were doing. Um, let's make this one a five-seater and then a premium sedan. We don't have a uh, a coupe body for this one so I'm thinking maybe we'll have to do something else uh, in terms of spreading this one a little bit thin I'm not sure what that'll be quite yet but I'm okay with that because I had fun building the muscle car but to be honest it wasn't uh, as much of a sales success as I was hoping for uh, in terms of driving sales for the model so uh, you know that's a totally okay though uh, we'll go for variable hydraulic ABS. We have ABS. Let's go ahead and put that right on. Advanced 80 safety, progressive springs, gas monotube, and we'll start with a normal tuning and go from there. All right. Well, that's a good place to start without uh, having done any fine tuning. Let's go back and start by taking a peek at the gearing and the wheel spin situation. We can definitely gear it up and actually go for a little bit more spacing as well. Maybe just a 55. Okay, interesting. So the uh, the viscous LSD is actually worse for the drivability stat than the geared LSD, which I think is meant to represent a torsion type. Um, but it's better for comfort, and it's like a little bit cheaper and more reliable, so it still winds up being better overall. And I do know one thing as well is that the viscous LSD cars are much easier to handle and beam, so that's another advantage. Uh, not that it's a good thing to do to design your automation campaign cars based on what works in beam, but sometimes I do it anyway. Just tune the brakes there for a little bit of front bias. 124 feet is uh, pretty good and 3,300 pounds is still not all that heavy for an all steel car. That's okay. The interior, maybe we'll sink a couple extra points of quality in there. One point of, actually, no, wait, eh, just one point of quality in there. That doesn't uh, into dry, into a, uh, Traction aids, excuse me. Uh, that adds not too much to engineering time. It's going to be long either way. Maybe we'll just put one point of quality in here for the suspension, and then we got to do a little something about this oversteer. I think the first thing that I'm going to do, 0.98 Gs is honestly kind of overkill for a car of this type. I don't think we need that much cornering grip, and having the car overtired like this tends to make it a little bit more oversteer prone. So I'm going to try taking the tires down to 205s. So we sacrificed a little bit of grip. 0.94 is still good, but that seems to have made this curve a little bit more manageable. Let's uh, go back and take a look again. Yeah, definitely an improvement. So let's, uh, let's go back with that and then uh, make the adjustments that we need to the rest of the way with uh, these little fine tuning sliders over here. I'm going to start by taking all the front camber out and then um, we can make the rear suspension a little bit softer or rather I think I'm going to start by making the front suspension a little bit stiffer. Okay that's starting to bring us into where we want uh, and then maybe we'll put in another 
0.5 negative camber in the back. We've got some breathing room on the sway bars. Maybe we can loosen those a little bit, but I do want, I think, slightly higher ground clearance than this, maybe 11.5, and that's a little bit much, maybe just 11. 11.2, yeah, that's the ticket right there. Um, what else can we do about this? <laughs> oh yes, less rear sway bar, more front sway bar stiffness. All right, 95% sportiness. Can we get it just a teeny bit more dialed in? 95, okay, you know, that works for me. And then maybe I'll soften both of the springs. Well, the front should be uh, a little stiffer. Okay, yeah, that looks about perfect. Slightly stiffer springs in the front, but still pretty soft and comfortable overall. Reasonable roll angle. Um, that's, uh, about, uh, I think that's about perfect. Should we go a little taller on the gearing? Just, uh, tune out that little bit of wheel spin. And 8.2 seconds, 0 to 60. Not too bad at all. That's a, that's a competent time for something that's not a sports car from, you know, the late 80s when I think this thing will be coming out. And for something that's a pretty large car, too. I mean, that's a, that's a good size, good size, full-size car. Uh, anyways... I think that's going to do it for the tuning here. I'm going to pop back in, throw together a quick design on this, and I'll be right back. Give me just a moment. There it is, the third generation Aspiration Premium Sedan. Um, I think it has more to do with the lines of the body than my fixture placement, but I actually think this is kind of an attractive looking car, if a little bit plain, especially at the back. I was having some trouble with the uh, non-mirrored fixtures making two body holes uh, where the other fixture should go if it were to be mirrored, but it's not mirrored. So, I don't know if anyone else has experienced that, but this is the first time I've seen it. Happened with the license plate up front as well, and that's why there's this sort of awkward-looking piece of body uh, sticking through there. But no matter, I still think it looks pretty good and uh, had a decent design. I went for like a split grill thing here in the front. I don't know. In any case, let's throw this thing around the test track real fast. Let's see what kind of time it puts up, just for reference and out of curiosity. And then uh, let's move on to into cloning some other variants of it. I still love the way that V8 sounds. Okay, 235, I think that's pretty good. I think that's not too much of a difference from the last one, but that's just fine. Uh, of course, this is the Excelsior B83. We'll make that name change adjustment real quick. Okay, um, let's clone it. And then the first thing that I know I want to make is another wagon because that's a pretty reliable seller. I want the five-door wagon, of course. And we'll real quick touch up these fixtures. I'm also going to adjust the morphs here real quick. I don't think we need... Well, actually, it might already be... Yeah, I think it is brought in as much as it can be at the rear. So I guess that's how it's going to be. Any changes to transmission? Nope. Nope. I think the only thing that we're really going to need to make adjustments to in this particular cloning case is maybe the suspension, but... I mean, I don't know, it seems, yeah, we might want to account for it like just a little bit more oversteer from having the extra weight in the back. So I'm going to tweak that in the sway bars. And now we have something that is pretty close to an approximation of the sedan. So not a lot of changes here. That's going to be the PW83. And then we're going to call that a day. So I have two other thoughts here. Now, especially since I want to move to producing this into a large factory, I think that means we could maybe get away with doing four trims. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but my thought would be to make one luxury sedan variant and then another maybe with the two-door sedan and a four-seater as like a family sport variant. 
and uh, that can compete in a little different segment. So I'm going to try that. It's not quite a muscle car, but it's sort of in the same vein. So, but first, I'm going to do the uh, I'm going to do the luxury variant since I think our Bravado is a little bit too expensive to compete properly in that segment. Um, the first thing that I'm going to do is bring it down to four seats. It's going to have. Um, uh, do I want? I think we'll do luxury seats, luxury cassette. Very good. Um, any changes here? I don't think so. No, no, no. The standard engine is just fine. Hmm. Maybe we'll give it air suspension. I mean, we have more familiarity in hydro pneumatic, but I might want to keep that reserved for like the uh, the high end car. Although then again, we did it do it on the previous. Uh, um, uh, aspiration, previous generation, if I recall correctly. Let's go back and actually target the market segment that I'm going for. Let's start with that. That would be good, huh? Let's try Hydro Pneumatic, better score, Air. Eh, actually, the Progressive is better than the Air Suspension, and I don't really want to do the Hydro Pneumatic, so we'll leave it as is with just the, uh, just the change in interior, I suppose. That's, uh, that might be enough to get us into the market that I'm looking for. That's going to be, of course, the LS83. Then we're going to clone that model, and I'm going to go in and uh, see if we can make like a sports sedan out of the two-door sedan body. And I think that this would be something that, you know, maybe it's not truly a muscle car. It can't compete in that segment because it's not the coupe body, but it's kind of in the spirit of the muscle car, especially since what I actually want to do for this one is give it the sport version of our Excelsior motor. The first time I think we've put the sport version in uh, one of our sedans. And I'm not worried, because it's a sedan body, I'm not worried about it competing with the uh, with the Firefly. Uh, let's do this here. We want multi-point EFI. We can dump a little bit more fuel into. We can advance the ignition timing. We can raise the rev limiter. A lot of things we could do for this. We probably want to put in a little bit more valve quality too, I guess. Although not too much more. Wow, we're already at plus four. We really need to switch this over to a four valve per cylinder engine if we want to rev it any more than, uh, than what we are here, I think. Um, or maybe run some tech pool. Uh, I don't know. We don't need plus four quality there. We're just going to go with plus one. Stick with the per cylinder ITB's throttle configuration. Up the compression a little bit. round that out okay 268 horsepower pretty good and we might be able to open up the exhaust a tiny bit yeah we can perfect should we go for a maybe a straight flu straight through to reverse flow for the sport motor yeah that adds some more power it's a little louder but that's all right it's still a reasonably quiet engine let's give this one a quick listen That sounds pretty good. It has good power. It's got uh, reasonably low weight, 430 pounds. That's not too bad. Let's uh, let's do some tuning here. Okay. This one, I think I want it to have a manual for making it a little sportier, you know. Lower the gearing a little bit. I'll tolerate some wheel spin, but we'll cancel it out by having slightly tighter spacing. Maybe not quite that tight. Yeah, that looks good. This is a family sport premium car. That's exactly the segment I want to target. We'll put sports compound tires on for more grip, and eh, I still don't want to go up to 215s because uh, that's going to make it handle kind of wonky. Uh, I'd rather just grab a little bit here in the suspension tuning area. We'll even out this. We'll dampen it a little bit more stiffly than it's sprung, and then uh, we'll lower the ground clearance by about half an inch. Uh, Okay, all looking lovely. 5.6 is actually about the roll angle that I would want for this. The tuning looks pretty close to perfect. I might want to put in just a little bit less uh, front camber. We don't want it to be quite that sporty. That looks very nice. I think we do need maybe vented discs in the back here too, and then a slightly more aggressive pad type. One more click just to dial out brake fade. That's probably all the changes that need to be made. Wow, 5.9 seconds. This car is now pretty darn quick too. And then, oh yeah, I want this one to be a four-seater. 
And, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe we can get away with a little cheaper stereo in here. So it's like a little bit more down market too. So it's faster and it's a little bit nastier, I suppose. Oh, oh wow, it looks good with the lower ground clearance. I like the way this car looks. All right. Any other changes I want to make here? No, I think that's it. I think that's done. Let's uh, let's run this one around the test track as well and just see how fast it goes around. I think it's going to be pretty quick. It's about 150 pounds lighter, 200 pounds lighter, something like that than the other one. That should make a good difference. 223, yeah, that's a pretty quick time. Okay. Um, PS83 copy, nonsense. This is the SS83 sports sedan but also just a fun acronym as well. For factory tooling on the third generation Aspiration, what I want to do is actually select this one here that's currently producing the Dragonfly. This was a new factory from last episode, but it's on a large plot. So what I'm going to do is select all four models here, and then we're going to upgrade straight from a medium one to a large one. And this should give us enough production, production capacity, excuse me, to justify these four trims. And also, going to the large factory really allows us to comfortably produce all four trims without taking too much of an efficiency penalty. Um, I think this should work out well for us. We've been selling these pretty well. Um, we can up the automation a little bit. I think I'd like to produce these at about an automation of 45. I don't want to go higher than that because we're still constrained on engineering time. Tooling quality will actually raise that to 60, and we'll just bring our QA threshold at 80, a nice steady one. This factory is still kind of inexperienced, but it's getting there. Moving along to the engineering management, the first thing I'm going to do is slam the funding slider all the way up because we're swimming in cash. 106 months, we can grab a tiny bit out of the automation tooling slider. Process, we'll take quite a bit out of that. Maybe I'll try and run that down at 25. And then, um, I don't know, maybe even just down at 20. Yeah, and then I don't really like to do it, but maybe I can just use the reliability slider to grind that down just to about 84 months. I can, and that's not too, too bad of a compromise. And uh, we got we gotta to we gotta compromise somewhere here as we get into the late games, the engineering times. Just get long. Let's hop into this and bust out some facelifts real quick. I do think they fixed that issue that I was having last time with the, uh, with the model's fixtures getting blurred, but uh, yeah, yeah, so it looks normal now before it was like blurring it with the Bravado fixtures. Anyway, let's pop in, starting with the GT car. First thing, of course, that I'm gonna do that I was remiss about last time, if the game loads, yep, there it is. First thing that I'm going to... Oh, yeah, it is still doing it. Okay, so this is actually the issue that I was having last time. I'll show you guys what I mean. You can kind of see here all the fixtures are all wonky. This is just after I've loaded the car in. Um, and it's like blurring the fixtures together with the uh, ones from the Bravado. And everything's all kind of... I don't know. All kind of messed up. So what I'm going to do, I think the other ones are okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just delete that trim. We'll say that. And then we'll hop in this convertible model and maybe we'll start with that. I think that one looked normal still. Yeah, this one seems fine. Okay. So I guess what I'll do here, I'm just going to quickly pop on some door mirrors, first of all, because I forgot that last time. There we go. Feeling and looking better already. Engine selection. We need to go and grab the uh, Sport variant. It's already existing of the Excelsior motor. S83, there it is. Anything else we want to do in here? I think we're going to move these cars over to a geared limited slip diff as well. These tires and everything are all, I think, fine. Um, hmm. No. Hidden auto soft top, luxury. We'll switch up to a luxury cassette. Move over to ABS. We'll give it advanced 80 safety. And then uh, I think that's it. That's probably all that needs to be changed for this model. Maybe we don't need 
uh, quite so much of a of a drivability tuning. I think we might want a little bit more sportiness, so I'm going to dial that in using the camber tool. Okay, good. Now, before I get into doing the SS75, I'm going to clone this one. And then I'm going to, real quick, switch the body over to a coupe. And then we'll have our GT car again, hopefully. All right, we're back in the original coupe body. I'm just going to widen out the fender flares there, because those didn't quite port over, so the car looks normal. Other than that, all the fixtures look pretty much perfect. Um, let's walk through here. We should be able to make some changes because it's a good deal lighter than the convertible. Sticking with a manual, a viscous limited slip diff. Maybe we could have a little shorter gearing for this guy. Uh, yes, yeah, just a little bit. Sports compound, 195s. We can tweak that gearing a tiny bit. Actually, maybe we don't need quite such uh well, no, that works just fine. I'm not going to make any changes. And nothing really to see here. Maybe we could have a little bit, uh, a little bit more rear arrow. Bring that up a little bit. Okay, it's still going to be a four-seater luxury, luxury. That's perfect, exactly what I want. And even the suspension tuning actually looks pretty good, but I want to make it just a little bit stiffer than what we see here for added sportiness. Oh, and the suspension tuning looks good. Well, this is excellent. So, let's call this one once again, the GT83. Finally, we move on to the SS75, or rather the SS83, the supercar we can put in the facelift of that big Phoenix V12. Uh, someone commented last time that I had uh, accidentally misspelled Phoenix. Of course, they are 100% correct. So there we go. Yeah, it's back in order now. Thank you very much for that. This is going to be the SS83. We'll go in here. We're going to replace the variant, and we'll start with the S75, of course, going to the S83. No changes to be made on the internals. Of course, the main thing is moving over to multi-point EFI. This is a supercar too, so I'm going to move it to premium fuel so we can get more compression. Um, car has severe issues with wheel spin. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, we're going to go a little bit power crazy here because I'm going to give this thing all-wheel drive. So I think we'll actually be able to use it this time. We're already getting almost 400 horsepower and we can rev it a tiny bit more. Oh, yeah, this looks excellent. 400 horsepower. I'm not going to turbo it just yet. I think 400 horsepower is just plenty to be uh, to be working with for now. And uh, no, I don't think anything else that I really need to do here. Oh, man, it looks good. I love the new, uh, love these new header graphics. Uh, intake, well, not headers, intake manifolds uh, graphics that they put in here. They look great. Um, let's give it a listen. Sounds decent. I don't know. Never really cared for the way V12 sounded in automation. I'm not sure why, but oh, it sounds okay. Um, let's see. Longitudinal all-wheel drive with a manual. And this is going to get the geared limited slip diff. What this is going to allow us to do is going to allow us to shorten that gearing right down. And we don't. we can still need to keep the first gear somewhat tall. I'm going to adjust the weight distribution, or not the weight distribution, the power distribution to be somewhat rear biased, both for handling and for traction. That'll help the car accelerate, and then that'll let us handle um, a spacing of about 50, maybe a little less. I want, I want to be able to just barely chirp the tires, which I think is about where we're at now. Ever so slightly short of gearing. Okay, 4.2 seconds. Now we're starting to get into, like, actual you know, recognizably fast numbers, even by modern standards. I'd like to do 225s front and back on this car. I bet we can handle it. Uh, we'll adjust this in the tuning, and I think we're going to get a really nice-looking steering graph here. Yeah, this is looking good. I love this. When it's, This is usually a sign that it's going to be a nice handling car when this line is just very straight, tracking one of these two lines going all the way up, and then it sort of, you know, dips down quite quickly, but not super quickly at the end. 
that's just a sign that it's got a nice, nice, good response until it just plows into understeer, which is exactly what I am looking for. We want a little stiffer suspension, I think, with stiffer dampers to match. We want, uh, I'm going to give this one handmade interior. I want it to have the best of everything. Anything else that I want to change? Brakes are actually looking good, except for the fact that they fade pretty badly. So let's make the pad type a little bit more aggressive. Car still weighs less than 3,000 pounds, so it's not like the weight is super bad. Um, is there anything else that I even want to do here? I don't think so. I think this might be everything. Oh, we do want to give it ABS and advanced 80s safety, of course. Progressive gas monotube. Yeah, I think uh, everything else here is looking uh, looking pretty good. Maybe Maybe not quite such an aggressive sportiness tune. About a 95% is what I'm going for, and that is where I'm at right now. Really attractive-looking scores, but I guess these don't matter anymore because they're based on the old uh, they're based on the old sales model, according to the most recent dev video. So I guess these aren't all that relevant anymore, uh, other than just being like directional indicators. <laughs> uh, but that's uh, that's fine, I guess. I'm still pretty confident that this car is going to do well. Uh, let's uh, not sign it off, but, uh, well, actually, yes, let's sign it off because these are all of the trims that I want to put together of it. Let's move into the factory management. Now, this one, yes, this is going to take over the Aspirations old factory, which is already a medium three, so we don't need to make any upgrades of it. Although, I think, can't we get aluminum presses now? Yes, we can. Yeah, we unlocked them in 1980, uh, which it's 1983 now. So that should help us with the uh, with our aluminum body panels, producing them a little bit more efficiently. That's really nice. We'll leave the automation. I'm actually going to take it down to about a 40, and then this will let us crank the QA threshold up, and then I'm going to pay the worker wages a little bit higher as well. No change to tooling quality. Can it complete that factory design? engineering time actually we might be able to get away with not quite all that funding maxed out i do want to take advantage of the tooling that we have available we can put the rest into process or at least a decent amount of it into process i don't want to run much more aggressively than a 45 and then maybe we'll take a little bit out of pressure grab a little bit of familiarity that never hurts and the rest can go into reliability for a nice round 84 months exactly what i'm looking for now let's get into doing the Excelsior engineering, and I think the engineering time is going to take a little while on this because we're introducing that multi-point EFI. We're probably going to need to upgrade the smaller of the two engine factories as well. Maybe what we'll do is we'll just automate things a little bit more. We'll put it up to a 50 on both of them. I think that is what we're going to do. And then let's grab engine factory number two here. This might have been the accident engine factory. <laughs> we can afford more QA threshold here. Engineering management, okay, 87, that's actually not too bad. If we max out the funding, that'll let us take the tooling up. We'll take some of those points out of process. Oh, actually, we're already having the funding slider all the way rammed up at 100. So I guess we can just uh, maybe leave that at about a process 45 because I want to be able to produce a good number of these. And then the rest can just come out of set funding and we'll save a little bit of money. Okay, yeah, engine factory is overworked, so... Definitely need to upgrade our second engine factory as well. That's just fine. We'll jump right up to a medium three. I like to, stip, to skip steps in these factory upgrades because the factory offline time actually has a really high opportunity cost. Uh, so I usually find like if you go through all of the individual steps, one, it takes more money and two, it, the real kicker is that it just takes so much offline time. I find that I have to skip steps to make it viable to upgrade through the factories. Now our production load is matched almost perfectly, which is wonderful. We'll sign that off. Oh, the S83 Phoenix. Uh, we'll come back to that in a moment. Now let's quickly run through the Bravado facelift here. I don't think we're going to have too, too much to see on this front just running through and making largely the same series of upgrades that I just made to the Dragonfly. 
to reflect the uh, increases in technology. Of course, we are going to update the variant here. Where is it? The uh, Phoenix 5.0 P83. I'm going to move the Bravado over to a Viscous Limited Slip Diff. Uh, tires, I think, could be slightly larger. We'll bring it up to 205-inch tires anyway. Uh, it could really use the extra grip, I think. This is a pretty big, heavy boat of a car. Um, so it, it needs it, I think. Uh, braking still looks perfectly good. Aerodynamics, nothing to change here. Still the best of the best for interior, safety, and electronic aids as well as suspension. Suspension tuning looks good. I don't think we need to go for all-wheel drive on this car. Uh, it, our wheel spin is plenty under control, and the engine just isn't as powerful as the other one anyway. It's already got a 7.3 second 0 to 60 time, which is bloody quick for a sedan that is quite this large. Makes me wonder if we shouldn't have even slightly larger tires, like 215s. Yeah, that might, that might be good. I think so. Let's do that. Uh, it means we have to have slightly more aggressive pad types, but that's that's okay. I'm, I'm fine with that. And then we probably can adjust suspension tuning a little bit. I think the only thing here that I might want to do is just put a slightly stiffer front sway bar in. And then I think we're perfectly fine. And I'm just going to run through basically just mimicking those upgrades over here on the convertible version of the Bravado. I'll be right back. There we have our luxury and convertible luxury barges all set up. Let's tool up this small factory. I want to see if I can produce these a tiny bit cheaper than I was before. It would be nice if they could reach just a little broader market. To, but again, I'm not super fussed about it. The whole point of these is just to make use of the small three, fact, small three factory. Blech. Sorry. I guess we'll just save a little bit of money on this because we have plenty of engineering time to hit our 84 month target. We'll just jam some reliability into it. Yeah, works for me. Let's, uh, let's grab this Phoenix motor. We'll quickly do the factory tooling on that. We shouldn't need to make any major changes, I think. Nope. Engineering time is only 33 months. Let's, uh, let's drop some funding out of it. Let's put some optimization into it so that we can produce it at a somewhat reasonable price. We'll get a little bit of pressure off so we can gain some familiarity in multi-point EFI, which is nice. And then we'll just grab the rest as reliability. I'll round it out with the one click of funding. Ooh, uh, that's not looking good. Huh. Do I need to somehow increase production of this? I mean, I could if I needed to. We, have, uh, we could run a more automated line on this. Let's see if I can run an automation of 50. I bet I could probably do it with an 84 month engineering time budget. And then what I'll do is I'll take even more out of process. We'll run that down at a 20. We can put some pressure back into it. We can put some funding back into it. And then the rest we can take out of reliability. Still running a 66 reliability, which is an improvement over last time. So not so bad. All right, 678 engines, that might be just enough. Uh, still not quite enough. Maybe I take a few more points out of process and then we will add some more tooling quality. Should we do 55? Yeah, let's try it. Okay, with these settings, it's pretty darn close. I don't mind if the factory one is just a little bit overworked. It runs an extra shift, you know, whatever. It'll be okay. It's better than buying another small engine factory. I don't want another useless small factory sitting around. These are a little bit cheaper than the previous models, so I can sell them at a slightly lower price, which is convenient. Uh, I think I'm going to try doing maybe 55 grand for the sedan. And then, I don't know, say this is about two grand, three grand more expensive. So eh, maybe we sell this one for, let's call it an even 60 grand. Eh, let's give it a try. Before we sign these off, I got to go back in and do some price adjustments here on the aspiration. Let's see what I want to sell these for. Okay, the premium budget 
is 32 grand and I can make this car for just shy of 20 grand. Let's shoot right in the middle of that, maybe a little towards the high side at 26K. And then I'll try to sell the wagon for about the same, I think. What's the price point on that family utility budget? Uh, it's only 23K, but eh, that's okay. We'll still capture enough of, that, enough of that market. The luxury sedan market is 50K, so we can make this one substantially more expensive than that. Let's call this one, I don't know, uh, we can produce it for 25, and I'd like to be making a bigger margin on it than the premium model, so let's try selling it for, oh, I don't know, 35 grand? How does that look? Yeah, that's a slightly higher margin than the uh, than the other one. And then the SS is by far the, uh, you know, by over $1,000 at least, the cheapest one to produce, but the budget is only slightly less than Family Sport, which is, or slightly less than the premium, which is convenient. But I am still going to sell this car for a little bit less than its uh, other uh, trims because it's a little bit less expensive to produce. And the budget is slightly lower. Okay, that looks good for pricing on this. I feel I feel good about that. Let's do the pricing for the Dragonfly. Hmm, how to set this up. Okay, the convertible sport budget is 30 grand. I can make this for 20. Let's try selling it for, I don't know, 35, because I want to base the price for these GT cars. Why is this one also targeting the convertible sport? Oh, I forgot to adjust it. Let's let's try selling it for 35 too. Actually, we can sell this one for a little bit. This one should be a little bit more than 35. Maybe it should be 36. And then of course, our supercar. Let's go right ahead. Sell that one for like 50 grand. Wonderful. We've got all of our models lined up here. A nice set of refreshes. I'm feeling pretty good about these. Um, and a factory upgrade as well. Our, our first large factory. Matter of fact, which is going to be, I think, nice because I think we need a large factory to produce treated steel. Um, that's like the minimum size for the treated steel plants. That I think unlocks like some point in the early 90s. So I think particularly for our high volume, um, our high volume aspiration model, that's it. Um, that would be a good one to produce with treated steel when the time eventually comes. Total cost of this project is 1.64 billion. I've got 1.62 billion in the bank. I probably don't need to take a loan out for this, but I'm going to take a small loan just to even out the cost a little bit, and maybe we can avoid paying some taxes. Because I'm playing a pretty low interest rate on it. I haven't done any math for this, but my thought process is maybe I won't have to pay quite so much in taxes after these models come out when they are hopefully oh so profitable and we are just printing money like I know we will be. Enough of that, let's sign it off. Wonderful. These models coming out in mid-1990 and of course that means time to take a look at the tech pool. Anything that I want to invest in here? Well, we could unlock treated steel. That's what I was talking about before for 94. AHS steel in 96. Oh, that would be a really nice thing if we could introduce new models with AHS steel. That would be a heck of a thing. And then, oh, we could reach out to get the um, oh aluminum engine tar architecture, the Alzi engine, engine architecture. That would be quite nice as well. We'll spend the money on it. Anything else we want here? Uh, Six-speed manual? Yeah, we'll get that. That would be good. Oh, we get active springs, too, in 95. And electric power steering. We're already running a deep enough tech pool for that, but I actually don't think that's all that important. And interior, I think if we put plus four in, get the premium CD unlocked, I don't think we need to rush the safety. We'll just leave that at a plus two. Um... I guess we should also maybe try to unlock the VVL because that's a feature at the family level. It would be good if I could get that unlocked and then we could put both of these, you know, make an Aussie block with VVL a few years early and then those will probably be the engines that take me through to the end of the game. Um, I don't even know if I'm going to replace the Phoenix motor. It's so new and uh, it's already a four valve, so it might not be worth it. But the Excelsior, I think it's, I think it's time. I'd like to move that over to a four valve per cylinder. Let's go back to the hub. 
I'm going to throw just a tiny bit more money into our comfort marketing across all of our different countries that we're selling to. And then I'm going to hit play and uh, let's let the game run for a few minutes and I'll check back in with you guys when these models go back on sale. It is June of 1990 and two exciting things have happened. Not only are our uh, new set of trims and facelifts about to go on sale, uh, they've just started rolling out of the factory, but we've also unlocked two new countries, Arcana and Deluha, uh, for uh, selling our cars in. So I'm going to do our requisite marketing. I think the same thing that we were doing uh, in uh, the other big three, I'm going to start doing in Arcana and Delua, and then I'm actually going to invest a tiny bit more marketing into the sort of big three markets here, because those are our big traditional strongholds. So any additional places we can sell our cars is a plus. We now have access to the whole world. Let's let the game tick once or twice here and see how... Uh, See how these models are doing in their early first days in the market. So far, so good. Stock numbers are moving, I think, in the right direction. Yep, they are. Everything looking good. The company's profitable. We're selling a lot of the aspiration. It's making up the vast majority of our revenue stream. Although the Bravado is also selling and the Dragonfly also selling quite well as well. Selling a lot more volume of the Dragonfly, our uh, stock number is much, much better here. You can see we had to give up some pre-orders. That's what this big spike in, uh, in loss is, having to give people their money back because we couldn't produce their cars. And uh, it occurs to me that we are very slowly <laughs> still selling through some old uh, 68 model aspirations here. I'm going to actually just go ahead and, and scrap these. I don't think we have any reason to be selling them cars from 1968 in 1990 well very very good in any case i'm going to go ahead and export a couple of these models over to beam um, i'm thinking i'm going to take the sports sedan of the new aspiration maybe uh, maybe the wagon as well and then probably i'll try to get the uh i'll try to get the new uh, all-wheel drive supercar version of the dragonfly and We'll see how that handles and see how that does as well. I might get the GT, GT car as well. We'll see. But in any case, I'll see you guys over in Beam in just a minute. All right, everybody. We're back the following day in real life uh, here in Beam NG Drive to start off by test driving the uh, wagon version of the third generation Aspiration. I, uh, I wanted to do the sports sedan, but I got some weird, I don't know what the effect was on the engine noise of it, but it made this very unpleasant sound at higher RPMs, which the wagon doesn't. Uh, the wagon sounds great, if a little bit quiet, but I guess that's the idea for this car. Um, I was tooling around with it a little bit off camera earlier, and I'm really happy with the way that this, uh, this build turned out. It just is very nice to drive, very controllable, pretty darn quick, but... Not all that fast. I do think it's probably time to start thinking of a new engine. Uh, something a little bit bigger, maybe with a little bit more power. Uh, perhaps we should do some turbocharging as well to really amp the power up if I wanted to get more power out with a reasonable weight. Nearly took it off the side there. Oops. I do think this is a fairly handsome car as well. I mean, I don't know. I like the body on this. It sort of has that low and wide look to it. Um, and I, but I kind of like the way the split grill in the front and the flared haunches in the back turned out. Not a bad looking car overall. Overall, I would say that this car is nice, smooth, comfortable, pretty easy to drive, and uh, just a nice kind of all-around premium car. I'm, I'm really happy with the result of this one, the way it turned out. Uh, to drive here in Beam, so let's hop over to uh, the test track, and I want to give the uh, I want to give the supercar a little test drive. We'll see how that goes. Okay, here we are with the Dragonfly SS83. Still super annoyed that I didn't add the door mirrors to this trim. I added them to the GT and the convertible, but not this one, and I'm so annoyed. But no matter, we're going to test it anyway. I did test the GT car as well off camera, but it suffered from that same engine glitch that I mentioned earlier. Uh, so what we're going to do 
is just test this one and I'll tell you guys, it actually wasn't all that different from the previous generation convertible. I think we need to tighten up the suspension on it a little bit, but let's focus on this uh, supercar for now because my God, what a fantastic machine this is. It's got tons of power, but with the all wheel drive, we can actually use all of it. And you can probably tell from the way that this thing is accelerating here that it's just an absolute monster. 400 horsepower by modern standards is, you know, still a lot of power, but it's not like an earth-shattering number. In the early 90s, when this car would have been on sale, it would have been a lot higher. Um, and also, like, for as little as this car weighs, like, this car still weighs under 3,000 pounds, I'm pretty sure. So putting 400 horsepower in a 2,000-and-something pound car... I mean, realistically, I think it's 28 or 2,900 pounds, but all the same, that's a lot of power for a car that doesn't weigh all that much, and it feels very stable at speed, too, but I'm not going to try and take that corner at a buck fifty. Man, this car feels nice. I really like the way this car handles. As much as I try to avoid all-wheel drive in campaign mode because of the extra cost and complexity that it adds... For really powerful cars like this, it helps a lot and makes a big difference in making the car handle well and uh, making it really drivable and usable and enjoyable and fun uh, for some ham-fisted oaf like myself. Uh, it really, really works well for that, especially with the slight rear bias. It preserves a little bit of the, I don't know, the driftability of a rear-wheel drive car, but lets you use the power more effectively and you know, lets you really use it to power out of a corner instead of just flipping yourself around. And you don't have to be quite so delicate with the throttle as you do in the two-wheel drive cars. I think that's going to wrap up today's video. Thank you guys, as always, so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. We've got plenty of money in the bank, and I do have one more factory that I'd like to build and introduce one more model. I've gotten a few ideas for what to do, but let me know what you'd like to see. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.